Rugby Championship, the second round, the second game. It's the Wallabies hosting the Pumas. It's a pretty important game for both these teams. They both lost in the first round. Uh, the results were, I guess, kind of mixed. The Wallabies will take solace in the fact that it was an away loss. And uh, this one's at home. Whereas the, the Pumas will, I guess, feel a bit better in the fact that although they were at home, they got a losing bonus point against the All Blacks and were only a few meters away from winning it. So, yeah. The result at the end for the Wallabies did look pretty bad. They had some chances in that game. Managed to blow them, so they will need to turn that around this week. Uh, it is important because basically whoever loses is pretty much done for the Rugby Championship. They're not going to be getting anywhere near that title. So, I mean, it's kind of out of their, their hands as it is. But, um, yeah, it's going to be an interesting game. Uh, both the teams have had a few changes. I will put those teams in the description so you guys can have a look. Uh, I guess they are changing things kind of for different reasons, but I'll get into that in a bit. So I'll start with the Wallabies, and I guess what Checker has done in a way is probably a bit of axe swinging. The axe has fallen on a few of these players, uh, namely Tom Banks. He's not playing, not even in the squad. Dane Halepetti, he's out, not even in the squad. And uh, Bernard Foley, out, not even in the squad. So yeah, they are not favoured for this one. Um, some of the bench has changed as well, but in terms of the starters, those three, those three guys have been uh, have been cut from the match day 23. Uh, who's come in and who's shifted around? Well, Beal has moved to fullback from the bench. He did impress when he came on uh, last week. That that Wallaby squad wasn't clicking, and he did add a bit of a spark to their back line, but it wasn't enough. Uh, Reese Hodge and um, Marika Korobiti will be the wingers, so Korobiti is in. He wasn't in last week. Reese Hodge, after last week's performance, is probably pretty lucky that he dodged that axe as well, but he is partially beneficial of the fact that his versatility allows him to cover virtually half the team. So he's a useful guy to have around in case you get injuries. Uh, Karevi and Kurindrani are in the midfield. I still don't feel like they kind of clicked as well as they could last week. Karevi... Uh, apart from missing a try, saving tackle, kind of did his level best to, to crush that ball forward. But if you've got both those guys, I feel like they need to be doing more uh, with them to, to get the ball over the advantage line. Uh, interestingly, the 19 combo has changed as well. So Guinea uh, swaps places with Nick White. Nick White is on the bench for this one. And uh, Christian Leliafano is, uh, is the starting 10. So it's kind of a good comeback story for the Wallabies in this one. It would be kind of like a fairy tale story for them if you've got Christian Lilifano back after he had cancer. He's come back. He's made his way. He played with. Uh, he played over in the Pro 14. I think it was, was it with Ulster, and then he played. You know, with the Brumbies, got himself into some pretty good form. Got himself a Wallabies call up, and now he's in line for a World Cup potentially. Uh, so it's going to be a great comeback story for him. Uh, also, James O'Connor. Having signed with the Reds, he has made the squad, so he's on the bench as kind of a utility back cover. His redemption story, round number two, is potentially on the card. So if those guys go well, it, as I said, could be a pretty nice story uh, in, a, in a year which hasn't had that many nice stories with all the um, other dramas kind of keeping headlines away from the actual rugby. Yeah, it could be a pretty nice story for the Wallabies for those guys. But it still remains to be seen as to whether Liliofano has got it at this level. As uh, some of you guys have pointed out, he did not play very well against the Jaguares uh, in that quarterfinal, quarterfinal, semifinal uh, in Super Rugby. So he's going to need to up his game to show us that he still belongs there, despite all the the kind of you know the the story stuff on the side. In terms of the actual game, he's still got a, a got to put in a big shift to show off that he's got it uh, in the Fords. There's no change to the back row. It's still Nasirani, Hooper, and Salakai Alotto, which I'm pretty happy with. I think it's a pretty balanced back row in terms of your big uh, your big guy in Salakai Alotto who can also take a bit of line-up ball. you got Hooper, who's your tackling machine, hopefully puts on a bit of pressure at the breakdown as well. And uh, Nasirani, who's that big ball carrying number eight. So, yeah, I think that works pretty well. Uh, Arnold and Rodder in the second row. Rodder um, was pretty good last week, and I thought Arnold was even better. So, yeah, pretty happy. 
Uh, Kepu was under a lot of pressure last week, but he retains his spot at tight head. Falau Fainga and Scott Sio comes back into the mix. So uh, James Slipper, who did take a massive knock to the head, uh, he is back, but he is on the bench for this one. Uh, alongside him is Tupo, who will need to improve from last week because it couldn't have gone a lot worse for him with that yellow card. And uh, Tolu Latu uh, is on the bench as well. Good thing about him coming from the bench is he adds pressure to the breakdown for for a hooker he's kind of that Malcolm Mark style where he's got that build he's just able to get over the ball so and he does seem to play better when he comes from the bench so yeah we'll see how he goes uh Rob Simmons is still there on the bench Luke Jones comes in it'll be his first time in a Wallaby jersey for a long time if he comes on uh as I said Nick White's dropped to the bench Matt Tamu is still there and as I said James O'Connor so I'm a bit disappointed that there's no spot for Joe Powell I would have thought if you're going to bring on uh Christian Liliafano it might be nice to give uh, Paolo Run seeing as they, they pr- uh, play pretty well together, but uh, not to be. I think he's off playing club rugby, so keeping himself at least match fit. Uh, for the Pumas, they have made changes. I think it is less swinging of the axe and more a bit of rotation from Mario Ledesma. Um, I have had a bit of news um, from some subscribers, and uh, well, one in particular, Rami from uh, from Argentina, who's been giving me a bit of the inside word from what's happening in the Argentine media, saying that they're looking to rotate some of these big guns who have been playing a lot of minutes. So that kind of makes sense in a World Cup year. You don't want to burn these guys out who've played a full season with the Jaguars, making it all the way to the final. Uh, you need to give some of those guys a break and give these some of these guys who've been playing in Europe some minutes and some of the other guys who haven't had as much game time. So I'm looking at Tukulet, who comes in at fullback. He's getting some minutes. Uh, Santiago Cordero. It's going to be interesting to see him back in the Pumas jersey. So that'll be nice. Mojano's on the other wing. So that's the back three. Uh, De La Fuente is still there at number 12. But Moroni moves in from the wing uh, into 13. And he was... You know, he's been one of the kind of key players for the Jaguars this season as well. So we'll see how he goes. Nicolas Sanchez retains his spot at 10. He's going to want to have an improved game. I mean, he did set up the Buffelli try with a nice kick, but he missed a pretty easy penalty and gave Brody Retallick a bit of a gift try last week. We know he can do better than that. We just need to see it. Uh, Kubeli continues at nine. There's a helicopter about to fly over my house. Must be looking for, um, must be looking for Buffelli because he's not in the squad. Uh, Facundo Issa is on at number eight, so I'll be very excited to see him get a go because he's been called back over from Europe. Um, very good player. Lazana comes in as well at seven, and Pablo Matera continues to captain the side from number six. Uh, Lavanini and Petty continue that good locking duo. Uh, Figalo, Montoya, and Tetez Chaparro are the front row. Montoya has had to come in for Crevy, who has a shoulder injury, so he's out. Um, which has meant that, uh, I mean, Montoya is a very adequate replacement, but it means that uh, Soshino, is it Soshino or Sochino? Uh, it seems like an Italian name. Uh, he comes in as the backup hooker with Vivas and Herrera comes in as uh, the backup tight head. He didn't play last week. Uh, Alemano is still there on the bench. Leguizamo is in on the bench. So he's another guy who didn't get that many minutes in Super Rugby. Uh, Felipe Escura is still there. Bonigia is still there. And Matias Orlando has dropped from the starting lineup to the bench. So yeah, there's a bit of rotation going on in that, um, that Puma squad. But as I said, it does make sense that you don't want to burn the players out. So you can kind of see the logic there, but you are missing. I mean, if you're a Wallabies fan, you'd be looking, no Buffelli, that's good news. Uh, no Crema, that's good news. Uh, Ortega Desio is not there either, so, um, yeah. Last five games, it's 4-1 to one in Australia's favor, so they have had the wood over the, uh, the Pumas in recent years, but again, kind of like that All Blacks and South Africans game, that one is this fixture last year in Australia, the Pumas got a pretty famous win over the Wallabies. So they have been there and done it before recently and got a result over the Wallabies. So they will go there uh, with a lot of confidence. Average score across those five games is 36 to 24. Uh, there have been a couple of times when the Pumas conceded 40 plus points. So that doesn't help the, the average for them. And uh, especially in that last game of the rugby championship last year between these two teams, Pumas had a big lead and then the Wallabies really ran them down. So... Uh, It is going to be an interesting one to watch. The bookies have Australia by four. I guess that's largely down to home advantage. Um, The 9-10 combo is going to be one to watch. If that clicks for the Wallabies, it could go well. If it doesn't click, it could go pretty poorly. Uh, I'm interested to see how the European-based players go for for Argentina as well. Sanchez, as I said, needs a bigger game. But um, 
Yeah, we'll see. Both teams desperate for a win, wanting to stay injury free. Um, I think I will probably do a live stream for this game because it is on at a pretty good time of the day for me to do live streams. My kids should be uh, well asleep by this time. So um, yeah, I should be doing a live stream for this Wallabies and Pumas game. Uh, it should be a pretty interesting one. You guys let me know your thoughts on the game. What are your thoughts on the squads? Who are you happy to see? Anybody you're disappointed didn't make the squads? Um, do you think four points is a pretty good margin or do you think it will be more or less than that? But um, yeah, you guys let me know your thoughts and I'll talk to you again soon. See you later.